In this tutorial, we're going to learn more about the row container layout. When a container is a row, child elements are placed horizontally next to each other, like so. When a row is resized, elements will either push each other as the row shrinks to wrap onto a new row, or as the row expands, elements will fit within one row. Now let's take a look at a real example. Here are some pricing cards in a group. The group is the row. With the group being the row instead of the page, we gain max width control over the group. If the max width of the group is infinite, it will grow infinitely to the width of the parent container. Since in this example, the parent container is the page, it will grow to match your screen size. If we have a set max width, then that's all the room we have to work with for this group as the page grows. Same goes for min width. If we set a min width, the row container will only shrink until it hits that min width. Generally, keeping the min width as low as the mobile screen you want to target is ideal. The row container layout has a special property that no other container layout has called container alignment. Container alignments allow us to globally align our child elements in a row. Here, we can align these cards to the left, center, or right. This is helpful for certain designs, though for a pricing area like this, we can take advantage of using space around and space between. Space around aligns every child element in the row by giving them even spacing from each other and the edges of the parent container. When the container alignment is set, new elements we add in will automatically adjust. So if we were to add a new element into this row that aligns its elements with space around, the element will automatically adjust and the row will add it accordingly, giving it equal distance. Our other row container alignment is space between. If we change this row to space between, child elements are placed at the start and end of the row and then given even spacing between the other child elements. With the new engine, we have new ways to order child elements. The best way to think about this is that any child element in a container layout is really a position in a list. I've gone ahead and given each card a different background color so we can clearly see where they are. Let's say we wanted this green card to be in the second position instead of at the end. In its property editor, we have order controls to change its position in the list. Here we have shortcuts like make first, which will set it to the first position in the list. Or if it isn't last, we can click Make Last, and it'll put it in the last position. If we wanted it in the position over, we'd click Previous. Or if we wanted it to go one spot forward, we'd click Next. Since we want this to go to the second position, I'll hit Previous twice. Child elements in a row are able to independently align vertically. By default, each child element has a vertical alignment already set to the top of the row. But with these vertical alignment controls, we can easily change it to center or bottom and it will vertically align the child element to the row. By mixing and matching each child element's vertical alignment, we can create more interesting designs inside rows that will still be respected even as the row is resized. If we uncheck fixed height from the shape element, you'll see a new alignment option called stretch appear. In a row, the stretch alignment property will take a child element and stretch it to its max height. Currently, we have the max height as infinite, so if we select stretch, it will grow infinitely or until it reaches the max height of the parent container. If the parent container's max height is infinite and fit height to content isn't checked, the child element with stretch will grow infinitely with the parent down the page. It's important to understand that a row can be the page and how the page as a whole responds, or it can be any other container element and how the child elements of that container element respond. Setting the page as a row is used mostly in custom layouts like a sidebar. Because a sidebar stays to either the left or right side of the screen, we make the page a row since child elements are placed horizontally. Therefore, one group can be our sidebar and the group next to it can be used for our main content. Outside of specific layout use cases like that, we primarily wouldn't make the page a row, and instead we'd use it in other container elements. If we set a group on the page to row, that group can then be added to a page that has a different container layout, but still responds as a row when the page resizes. An example here would be a nav bar. Here our nav bar is a row, but our page is set to column. As we resize the page, our nav bar group that is a row still behaves like a row. It's key to learn the difference between when you would use the page as a row versus a group that's a row when it comes to laying out elements on the page. The row container layout takes out the guesswork and now handles your left to right responsive designs for you.
That's it for this tutorial. For more, be sure to check out Bubble Academy.